I just want to ask you, do you know why you're here? No, I don't. Do you have any idea why you're here? No, I don't. Okay, well, we're working on an investigation, and uh, there's a warrant for your arrest uh, charging a count of murder. Count of murder? Yes, sir. So, uh, before we get into it, I know I can see right by your expression, you've got a lot of questions to ask us. Right. We've got a couple to ask you, too. Okay. I'm sure you've seen this on TV a thousand times. I've got to advise you, and then we'll talk about it man to man here. And okay. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. You have the right to remain silent. Do you understand that? Yes. Anything you say may be used against you in court. Do you understand? Yes. You have the right to the presence of an attorney before and during any questioning. Do you understand that? Yes. You want to sit here and talk to us uh, about that? Oh, you know what it's about. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, here, I forgot. If you uh, cannot afford an attorney, one will be appointed for you free of charge for questioning. Do you understand that? Yes. Okay. So, uh, you want to sit here and talk about the uh, warrant? Yes. And what the charges are against yes. you? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. We have been uh, investigating a murder that occurred in uh, 2007. Okay. And it involves a young lady. And I'm going to ask you, show you a photograph of this young lady and see if you recognize her. No, I don't. You've never seen that girl before? No, I haven't. Who is that? Is that Peters? Yes. All right. No, I haven't. Okay, uh, like I said, we've been investigating this since 2007, mm -hmm. and uh, um, you're not down here. We didn't just pick your name out of a hat. I mean, I, you watch all these little police mm. shows and CSIs and and all that stuff with modern technologies and all that. All right. Okay, well, you've been identified to this young lady. Okay. Okay, do you understand that? Yes, I do. Okay. Do you have any questions about that? Why would you be uh, identified? I don't know. I, I don't know. I know a lot of people, but I don't know her. Okay. All right. So do you know how the, I'm sure you've probably uh, heard about DNA. Mm hmm Okay. Well, your DNA was identified uh, in relation to this young lady's death. Okay. No, I'm just saying. I, you, that's what you're telling me, so that's, okay. all I can, yeah, that's all I can say. How could that happen? I don't know. You have no idea? I have no idea. You've never seen this lady before? No, I haven't. In your life? No, I haven't. Do you have anything you want to ask about her? No. Okay, in 2003, this young lady was found killed. Have you ever seen her? No, I haven't. You don't know that lady? No, I don't. You've never seen her? No, I haven't. No, I haven't. Mr. Franklin, just like the other one, your DNA was found on this young lady. Okay. Is there a way to explain that? No, it's not. There's no I don't way. Know this, I don't know this lady. <coughs> Sorry. That's uh, Valerie McCordy. Okay. Mm -mm. Think about it. Think hard. This is very, very, very serious. I mean, you're telling me you watch these shows. I mean, it's I like we put your name out of a hat. No, I don't know her. <clears throat> okay. 2002. This young lady was then. Do you recognize her? No, I don't. Princess. I don't. You've never seen, never seen her before? Mm -mm. No. Mr. Franklin, we're, we're, we're both old guys. Right. Okay. Yeah. And I'm sitting here and, uh, <coughs> you know, I'm, I'm ready to answer questions of you. Right. I'm, I'm being up front with you. And, uh, and, this, and by you telling me that you don't know these people or hadn't know any way that your DNA got on their bodies, no. you're insulting my intelligence. I'm sorry, I don't know. I do not know. Okay. In 1988, this young lady, Alicia Alexander, was 
was found. And again, my it's, all, it's all linked to you. Now, Mr. Franker, I mean, you watch these shows. You tell me once, you know, maybe you met the gal and you had a little relationship with her and she turns up dead. You know, or maybe a coincidence. I just showed you four people. Four people. I mean, your coincidences are getting pretty slim, wouldn't you say? Yes, sir. I mean, well, I mean, what do you? I mean, do you have anything uh, to say? I mean, no, I don't. I don't know the people. <laughs> I'm sorry. I mean, how would your DNA get there? What logical reason? I don't. I have no clue. No clue. I mean, I have no clue how my DNA would get there. This young lady, Lucretia Jefferson. No, I don't know her. Again, coincidence? My DNA. I have no idea. Let me ask you something. Do you, uh, do you know what DNA is? Yes, the blood, saliva. Anything, okay. any body fluids they make contact. Okay, and it's 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 like a fingerprint. Mm -hmm. Yeah, only one person has that DNA. Okay, so you you understand it probably better than I do. I yeah, understand, uh, but I don't know these people. So okay. Okay. yeah, you got five or six people here. Well, and I so don't far, know. so far. Yeah. From me, uh, yeah, you yeah, know. Are you? Uh, you go to church? Yes, I do. Matter of fact, I'm supposed to be at church tonight. Okay. What church is that? I go to uh, Greater New Baptist Church. Where? Greater New Baptist Church. Where is that? In Los Angeles. What what street? San is Pedro. San, Pe San Pedro. On San Pedro and in San Pedro what? and uh, Martin Luther King. Okay. Mm -hmm. How long have you been going to that church? I've been going there for like three years. Off and on, and I'm a member of the Civil Line and the Hope. Okay. Where did you go to church before that church? <sighs> oh, I was just. I bounced into my wife's church on the corner right there. What church does she go to? Uh, Jerusalem. Okay. And do uh, uh, you remember a church uh, that uh, used to be on Normandy by the name of the Cosmopolitan Church? Remember that? Normandy. Normandy what? 60th. 60th? No, I don't. Normandy? No. Only go to like, that's only two churches. I, well, know, this is this is going back in okay. probably the, uh, the late 1980s. Okay. Were you a member there? No, I wasn't. Did you used to have access to drive their van? No, I didn't. Did I you know didn't. people that went there? No, I don't. You're not that far from 60th and Normandy from uh, where you're living. Yeah, it's around the corner from the park. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, but uh, that that sounds familiar to you, uh, the Cosmopolitan Church. No, it's not. Okay. Okay. Not at all. All right. Well, I'm just testing your your memory here. Your, I mean, your your well versed in uh, DNA. It's uh, because I buy food right there on, uh, right there one block before you get the gauge. Just a little Mexican spot I get food at. Well, the church isn't there anymore, but uh, yeah. years ago it was there. But uh, I'm I'm just. Personally, I'm very uh, impressed of your, your, your knowledge of the DNA, that it's saliva and blood, and it mm -hmm. only only connects to one person in the world. And uh, I mean, even even your uh, your kids don't have your DNA. You know, they right. might have your blood type or something, but they don't have your DNA. That's just like they don't have your thumbprint. It's only Mr. Lonnie Franklin that has the DNA makeup that's found on those young ladies right there. So how in God's name is that possible? I don't know. No, no thoughts. I mean, do you? Okay, all right. Ready? This young lady here, Mary Lowe, was her name. No, I don't know her. She looked like um, the girl of in um, Rialto, one of my wife's friends. Hmm. But her name is. Uh, Her name is. Damn, she is called a few weeks ago. I can't. They come to me. But I don't know her. Okay. But she is favorite, the same facial. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well. 
That's another one. This young lady here, her name is Bernita Sparks. Wow, she looked heavy, said. <laughs> Why? No, I just said she looked fat. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You ever own any weapons? Yes. What kind of weapons? I have a 22 long rifle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What else? Uh, 38 revolver. Okay, what else? Uh, I got a. Well, I had a 9mm. 9mm? Mm hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any other handgun? Mm, 22 pistol, 22 revolver. 22 revolver? Mm -hmm. That's different than the long rifle you mentioned? Yes, it is. Did you purchase those in gun shops or did you get them on the street? I purchased a couple of them at gun shops, gun shows. At gun shows? Mm hmm. And gun shops? Okay. Well, what, what Western, what Western Surplus was down the street. I bought, a, oh. uh, I bought one, but it should be on record. I bought one there. For the 22 long rifle? Yeah. Okay, and then you said the nine millimeter. Mm -hmm. Where'd you get that? The nine millimeter, I sold it, but I got it out of Texas. So okay, so you no longer have that gun. No, no. And you mentioned the thirty-eight, thirty-eight revolver. Okay, where'd you purchase that one? At? I think I got it from my dad. From your dad. Mm -hmm. Okay, and is there Man, still was, at the house? It was stolen. No, it, it was stolen. stolen. It was stolen. I was. It was broken into. House was broken into some years ago. Oh, okay. And it got, it got stolen. Do you remember when that was stolen? See, we stole the car in 88, but they broke into the house in 91. 91. Mm -hmm. and that's a 38 revolver? Mm -hmm. I lost two guns. I lost two guns. Okay, what was the other gun? A 22 pistol. 22 pistol. That's it's different from the long one. Right. That you're talking about the revolver. Right. It was a little, little you can sit right here in your pocket. Okay. Yeah, 22 well, revolver. And the 22 long rifle, that's what, a semi? I mean, could you It's a Ruger. It? it was a Ruger. So it's like a semi auto? Yeah. I guess so. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, mm -hmm. that's why I'm just trying to make the distinction there. Mm -hmm. And um, so that's all the handguns you have? That's it. You don't know any more hands. No more. What about that twenty-five caliber there in your closet? Twenty-five caliber. What is it, a rifle? No. Twenty-five caliber. It's a twenty-five caliber. A pistol. Mm-hmm. Yeah, over the. Sh that's not mine. It's not. No, that's. My brother-in-law, um, Delroy Lino, he has two, I have two things of his. He got evicted. Uh, we just picked up his stuff last last week. What was the other thing you got? What? But what was the other thing that you got? You said you picked up two things? Oh, the shotgun. Where is that at in the house? That was in, the in my closet. closet. In the mm -hmm. same closet? Mm-hmm. You don't own any other handguns. Mm -hmm. This young lady here. Her name is Barbara Ware. <coughs> Never saw her before. Mm -hmm. No, nothing about it. Nothing about it. Sorry, I don't. Again, you know, it's like I told you earlier. I mean, I'm really feeling insulted here because all of these people, and it's like I told you earlier. Mm -hmm. I mean, come on, we're grown men here. I'm not playing games with you. I'm laying my cards right here on the table, just like this. I'm laying my cards right here. I'm telling you. Maybe one, I'd say, okay. Two, I wouldn't be going to Vegas if I were you, because your luck isn't that good. 
But look at all of these. Your luck is running out fast. And unless you come up with some kind of ex explanation. I mean, I'm not hiding anything from you. I'm telling yeah, you straight up. Straight up. This young lady, her name is Henrietta Wright. Go ahead. Take a close look. No recollection at all. No recollection, or you just don't. I don't know her. I don't know her. But ugly, I don't know her. So what? <laughs> but ugly, I don't know her. Mm. Mm. Sorry, I don't know her. Young lady, Deborah Jackson. <clears throat> so if I told you you were connected to the deaths of all of these ladies, who do you think Detective Kilcoin and I would be sitting here looking at? Huh? Mm -hmm. You don't know who we'd be looking at? Oh, okay. You're looking at me. <laughs> You're looking at me. Yeah, I okay. mean, do you? I mean, do you agree? Yeah, I, mean, I agree with you. I agree with you on that. Yes. I mean. Uh, I mean, all of these people that you say you don't know through scientific evidence are all pointing the finger at Lonnie David Franklin Jr. Sit there and look at their faces all staring at you, pointing that finger at you. Don't insult my intelligence. Please insult don't you. insult. I'm, I'm gray haired. I'm going bald. I'm getting close to the end here. I've done this a lot, okay? Just like you. You've been around. I respect your experience. You're probably the best mechanic uh, there is out there. You're good at what you do. And we've been doing this for a long time, too. You wouldn't be here if we weren't absolutely convinced that you did these to these young ladies. Give me an explanation. I have no explanation to do. Give you for something I didn't do. So you're just saying you just got to run a bad luck? No, I'm not saying I got to run a bad nothing. I don't know these people. That you're connected to them? Look at them. They're all staring at you, pointing their fingers. Well, if they could point their fingers, they're looking right at you. There's my cards. There's my deck right there. Yeah. I think my hand's a lot better than yours right now, Lonnie. <clears throat> Your bluff ain't cutting it. You a poker player? No, I'm poker. Good, because uh, I wouldn't be gambling with this either if I were you. Mr. Franklin, you have a major problem today. July 7th, 2010. 25 years ago. You, you, you've had this problem for at least that we're aware of for 25 years. You creep out, you pick up these young ladies uh, that are out working Western or Figaro or whatever in the middle of the night. You have sex with them, you kill them and then you dump their bodies in alleys throughout the city of Los Angeles, most of them near, not too far from your house. There, there are, you see the, the number of faces here, that's how many families are affected by this. Families that have been suffering with this for 25 years. Parents, you're a parent, you've got young, young children, or not young children, but you've got children, what do you think it would feel like to have your little girl murdered, dumped in an alley, and and not know how that how that came to be for 25 years? But somebody somebody left their DNA 
uh, signature like their thumbprint on my little girl. 25 years over a, a, a number of these for 25 years, all the way up until recently, just a couple of years ago, that person continues to leave their DNA thumbprint on all these young ladies who had, had uh, a life, had families. They may have been out working, they may have had some drug problems, whatever, but they still have loved ones. And that's your little girl. That's your little girl out there, and some some guy that's got a that's got a problem. He keeps picking them up, having his way with them, killing them, dumping them in alleys like they're trash. But he's leaving his mark. He's leaving his. It's like a dog pissing on a fire hydrant. That's you. You're leaving your mark every single time you do this. Well, now the science has caught up with you. Mr. Franklin, your signature is on every one of these young ladies. There's no denying that. There's no getting out of it. You need, you need to man up and start talking to us why, what in God's name caused this to happen, caused Mr. Lonnie Franklin when he's not working on a car, when he's not with his wife and children, when he's not driving the trash truck or fixing a police car in a, in a garage somewhere, why he's out creeping at night and, and he, he can't control himself or he just, just whatever. But how did this happen? These families, just like you would want to know if something happened. We'll talk about that in a second. But this, we know an awful lot about you, probably much, much more than you realize, especially since the comment you just made that you don't creep at night. Oh, I have a place where I go. I have a girlfriend. Oh, and where is that? I guess you know, Buckingham. Okay. Mm -hmm. Around Palmyra. Mm-hmm. Well, we also know, know that you cruise Western Avenue looking for whores every night. Every night. Okay. Well, not every night. Not every night. You were sad. You were out there last night. The cops shine their light at you and you skedaddled on home. You were out there a couple of nights ago, Saturday night. Oh, I was on, oh, I saw the cop when he shined his light on me. Uh -huh. I was on 40, uh -huh. I was right on 48th, you... and, uh, 48th and Western. Okay. Right. Right. 48th and Western, because I pulled over to use my, if he didn't notice, I was using my cell phone. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Right, okay. Mm -hmm. and, uh, what, Lonnie, what was it Saturday? What was it Saturday? Saturday? Out there, 41st and Western. 41st and Western, I was with a friend that night. I was with a friend that night, his girlfriend, his girlfriend, uh, that was... Uh, okay, let, let, me, let me stop you right there, because I don't want to hear your bullshit, okay? okay. No I'm problem, not going to waste no my problem. time in here and listen to I'm bullshit not about it. I know I'm talk on the phone and this, that, and this. And how, are we gonna, how are you going to explain away your one and only on earth DNA attached to all these young ladies over a 25-year period? I can't explain it. You've seen the billboards up on uh, Western Avenue with the reward and all the faces, all these faces. Right here. Oh, oh you've seen the billboard where there's one right at 91st and Western. Haven't you haven't seen the news over the last several years? Seen. You know what the news calls you? You tell me what the news calls you. Well, I know damn well you know. I mean, you watch the news at night. You watch TV. I heard talk about some guy on the news. And what do they call him? What was it? The uh, Reaper. The what? The Reaper. Grand Reaper, or something. Like the Grim Sleeper. Oh, okay, I know it's something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I saw it on. I saw it on TV. I look at TV. Well, of course you do. Yeah, of I got TV you do. in every room. Well, well, there you go. All right. There yeah. it is. I'm so, sure and here we are, sitting them. here. Paul and Dennis are sitting here having a chat with the Grim Sleeper. And that is Mr. Lonnie David Franklin Jr. It's not me, my man. Sorry, it's not me. Okay, then you Let tell me. me you tell me how all of your DNA got on every one of these gals. I have no way. Of, I, I, I don't have not a clue. Well, I, 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 I know. I haven't been with these girls. Well, I don't know how, how my DNA got there. Well, you're laughing. I mean, this was not a funny. No, it's not. This, this well, was when not. you tell me something like that, you know, it's you know, I wasn't with them. 
Okay. Well, then how did how did your how did your DNA juice get on these bodies? I, I don't know. Well, I mean, you 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 watched all this shows. I'm sure you watch all these crime things and about how the modern technologies and the DNAs and I mean, how, how does how does it happen? I mean, it's not like he said. It's not just something we didn't pick your name out of a hat. We did not pick your name out of a hat. Just like he says, your signature, your little DNA, all your little markers comes back to all these women that are staring at you right now. And every one of them has a family, just like you or got a wife and children, and they, they deserve an answer as to what happened to their little, why, why did this happen to little little girls? And uh, and I, I, I got to agree with them. I, I've met with the families many, many times over several years. And uh, some of these people have lived with uh, the unknown for 25 years. And, uh, and I think you deserve, uh, they deserve an answer from you. I mean, you're not going to wiggle out of this. There is no way in hell that this is going to, you're going to wiggle out of this. Your, your DNA signature is on every one of these daughters here. And, and, and you're going to sit here and say, I don't know, I don't know. And uh, last night I pulled over to talk on the cell phone. I mean, come on. Lonnie, I know what I did because me and my girl, I just left my girl's house. And we were, we were talking. And that's when she called me. I already got one ticket for talking on the cell phone. So I pulled over. Uh -huh. and, uh, and I was talking to her. Well, this okay, happened you know. to pull over by a worker. Whether you, whether you did or not is really that's pretty. Yeah, that, that's the minor thing, Lonnie. I saw the I saw a girl out there, Lonnie, Lonnie. Lonnie. You can ask her. Did I say anything to her? Uh, no, Lonnie, that, Lonnie. Okay. That, that's that, an issue right that now. Is, that is the minor mm. thing. You have much bigger problems mm -hmm. than whether or not you were going to get a ticket for talking on a cell phone in the car. This is your problem, mm -hmm. and I guarantee you, Lonnie, we're going to do everything in our power that you never see the light of day outside of a prison again. Do you understand that? I understand that. Well, I, I mean, you're not going to see Crystal unless you're talking to her through uh, plexiglass windows. You're not going to see Sylvia. You're not going to see... You've worked on your last car. You know, you, you've instantly become a billboard celebrity off Western Avenue. And uh, unless you start talking and tell us what, what, what happens to Mr. Lonnie Franklin... To, to cause this to happen? What what goes on? In, uh, I mean, are you two different people or something? I mean, is, no. there, a, is there another little uh, side of Lonnie Franklin that we're unaware of that snaps in the middle of the night every couple of years he goes out and kills somebody? I haven't killed anybody, so I'm not even tripping on that. One of these gals has uh, survived. And she's going to have a she's going to have a grand time sitting in a courtroom looking looking down at a man that that uh, did her some terrible that. terrible things years ago. You know these girls they can't talk, but we got one that can. Well, they talk. They talk through the evidence that points at you, Lonnie. Yes, sir. You're fifty. What you'll be fifty eight next month, right? Correct. You know, I say you're, you're not going to be getting out. I mean, now is the time to sit there so that at mm -hmm. least us and the twilight of our careers can go back to these family members with an explanation. Don't you think they're owed that? Somebody Wouldn't you be owed that if someone was showing a picture of Crystal? Yes. That's what they deserve. You're done. The life as Lonnie Franklin knew it is over. You've gone to your last pizza party uh, down at Buena Park. You've trolled Western Avenue for the last time. You've seen fireworks for the last time. 
your lady friend at Buckingham and King. You've seen her for the last time. You think once you're locked up, they're really going to care where Lonnie is? They're going to move on with their lives as well they should. They're going to be tainted as uh, being relatives of the what the grim sleeper. Their lives, your own family's lives, are going to be changed tremendously after today. I know you're a gentleman, and I can tell by talking to you this morning and when we met you out at the, the house earlier, and I know that you have a conscience, and you have a soul, and you inside have a problem, and that problem has caused all of these tragedies to happen. But along the way, you left your mark. And uh, I'm sure that wasn't by design that you left your mark. But like I said earlier, science in 2010 has caught up with something that you did in 1985, 1986, 1987, 1988, 2002, 2003, 2007. All of these years that have gone by finally has... has as, as probably a blessing to you, science has finally stopped what Lonnie Franklin inside can't control. And, uh, and that's what brought us to today. And I know that you're an intelligent man, that you have a conscience, that you have a soul inside, and that I think you want to talk, tell us. You want to tell these family members of these young ladies that can't talk anymore that you're sorry and that you just don't you, you don't know how how this happened but you, you I, I don't know you gotta you gotta open up and tell us I mean it's uh, we don't have all of the answers yet but we're working on it so what's what's the deal Lonnie? There's no deal. I mean, I, I don't know any of these people. I'm sorry. I didn't tell okay, well, I, okay, I'll give you that. Maybe you don't remember their faces. So if we, if these were all the same young black female face of your daughter, and every one of them has your DNA juice on their body that only belongs to you, how is it? How does that happen? How did that? I, I I I agree. You probably don't know their names. You probably wouldn't remember them if they came up to you uh, uh, the next day after you had sex with them or whatever. In uh, <clears throat> but you, I mean, you picked up trash for a living in alleys. You didn't. You, but you're dumping them like they're like they are trash. You're disposing of these young ladies with. Uh, uh, in the alley or in the trash bin, and then you're piling stuff on top of them, and they're trash to you. And so it's just, I mean, how do you get there in your brain? How, how does that happen? It's just without something inside you that, that's causing you some uh, some terrible, terrible uh, struggle going on inside the body that's of Lonnie Franklin that's leaving all this juice everywhere. I mean, this isn't something that your neighbor did or the, your son did or your, the, your uncle or brother-in-law. This is just something you did. Talk to us, Lonnie. I have nothing to say on that. I, I don't know none of these people. And I mean, you think that's just going to make it go away? No, I didn't say it was going to make it go away. I just have to get an attorney because I didn't know none of these people. So I don't just that. I have to get an attorney. All right. I don't know what else to say. Uh, it's all going through his head right now, man. He's just looking at his future, thinking of his past and what has he done. Guess as he wants an attorney now, so. Okay. Okay. okay, Lonnie, this is what's going to happen. You're going to be arrested for murder. You have 10 counts of murder filed against you. 
along with an attempt murder on the young lady that was survived. You're going to be taken down to the court. You'll be arraigned tomorrow. And then just stand by. When they booked you this afternoon, there's a search warrant going on at your house right now. There's police uh, people, a lot of different people, searching your home right now. And it also added on the search warrant is uh, some things from your body. They're going to uh, take a, a little blood from you. They're going to take a swab from your mouth, and that's by, uh, by order of the court. So as on the booking process, that's going to take place as well. Okay? So uh, that's all. We respect your request to have an attorney, and that's that. So... Any questions? No mm -hmm. questions. Right. Okay, wait, we're not done yet. You told about the search warrant. I did. Okay. As part of that search warrant, uh, it was signed. We're going to collect some of your saliva. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Blood, okay. saliva. Okay. But okay, so we're bringing over the little swabs. We'll take care of that, and, uh, and then we'll have to take them over. And, uh, but. I'm going to uh, check off on what the other thing is going on. Are they going to take care of this? Yeah, let me find you outside.